Indigenous peoples and local communities have always understood the indivisible connection between our lives and economies, our cultures and identities and nature that modern industrial society is only just beginning to comprehend. And after sounding the alarm for decades, it must generate mixed feelings to see the rest of the world finally begin to wake up. I've had the privilege of meeting leaders from indigenous communities from all over the world in the run up to COP26 in Glasgow and on inspiring visits to the Congo Basin, Costa Rica, Colombia, Peru and Ecuador as well. Now, globally, the land they live on and look after contains more than two fifths of threatened mammal, bird and amphibian species. Indigenous peoples are the guardians of more than a third of the world's intact forest landscape. And as well as extraordinary biodiversity, that includes more than a quarter of the carbon stored in the world's tropical forests as well. It's an extraordinary thing, and it is not a coincidence because all the evidence tells us that IPLCs are more effective at reducing deforestation and preserving and restoring biodiversity than governments and agencies can accomplish through mere protected areas. Now, while others have been part of the problem, IPLCs have been providing solutions against the odds without recognition and often in the face of acute danger. So as well as being fundamentally the just thing to do on the back of generations of injustice, it's clear that we will only be able to help the natural world recover if those who depend on nature most directly and who understand nature most deeply are at the heart of protecting and restoring it. Now, I'm immensely grateful to all the leaders who worked with the UK presidency to bring nature from the margins of global climate politics into the heart of our global response at COP26. And I'm proud of the commitments made by more than 140 countries representing over 90% of the world's forest cover to halt and reverse forest loss and land des degradation by 2030 with around $20 billion committed by governments and philanthropy to help them to do it. But I was also delighted that part of that included a recognition of the importance of forest land rights and of supporting indigenous peoples and local communities. 22 uh, government and philanthropic donors committed at least $1.7 billion between 21 and 25 to strengthen the security of indigenous peoples and local communities tenure rights so their land and forests cannot simply be taken away from them and so that more funds actually get to them. And while it's a welcome world first, it's been a long time coming and it's just the start of what is needed. As one Indigenous leader said to me at COP26, we've achieved all of this without any support at all. Can you imagine what we'll be able to do with support? But now we have to deliver. And so as well as investing more in UK funding and programming to support forest communities, we are convening the Pledge Donor Collaboration Group to improve the way that we support Indigenous peoples and local communities to get existing finance flowing in the right direction and to channel more support at scale as well. Giving proper respect at last to the profound knowledge and understanding that indigenous peoples and local communities have nurtured over centuries is not just the right thing to do, it is fundamental to securing our shared future on this planet as well. So let us all work together in partnership in the months and years ahead to make sure that they can continue their proud legacy of conservation without fear and with a fair share of the recognition, the resources and the rewards.